The cut is the most powerful tool an editor has at his disposal, yet it's one of the hardest to master. In what order should shots be shown? What drives the decision to leave one shot and cut to another? And how can you fully harness the cut? I'm Chris. And I'm Leon. Welcome back to Film Editing Pro's four-part series, What Drives the Cut? In part one, we examine the evolution of film editing as an art form. In this video, we're going to talk about how stories can be told with editing. But first, we need to talk more about the cut itself. Quick note, for a steady stream of new tutorials from professional Hollywood editors, be sure to subscribe to the Film Editing Pro channel and turn on notifications. Okay, let's begin. Modern movies contain hundreds, if not thousands of cuts. Each cut consists of two elements, the shot that you're cutting from and the shot that you're cutting to. Unlike other transitions, a cut is instantaneous. It's invisible. Thus, we can think of a cut as the decision to change from one shot to another. So that begs the question, why do we choose to change shots? Different shots include and exclude different information from the frame. By holding back information, an editor can generate anticipation. When it becomes relevant, an editor can guide the audience's attention and deliver the correct information. In fact, the sequence in which information is shared is so critical that editing can make or break a movie. Let's explore this thought further. In a good novel, questions are posed and answers are withheld to compel the reader to continue. A murder mystery typifies this. But the same is true of all stories. You finish the book because you want to know who did it. If the opening page revealed the murderer, his motive and method, there would be little point to continue reading. Instead, each chapter, page and sentence is carefully crafted to keep the audience in anticipation and deliver relevant information as the narrative advances, revealing just enough to keep the reader engaged, but withholding just enough to keep you reading. You could say those big overarching questions, they are the page turners. But what stops you from just skipping to the last page? Have you ever watched a movie, but because it's boring, skipped to the end? The premise is intriguing. It's got a great macro story. You want to see the conclusion, but there's no micro story to keep you watching from shot to shot and scene to scene. Well, a great story poses smaller questions along the way. These are the sentence turners, if you will. And they're just as important as the page turners, if not more. These smaller questions might be something like, what will he say back? Who is inside? Will the arrow find its target? These tiny decisions represent the opportunity to give a story momentum or slow it to a crawl. In fact, a sentence is the perfect analogy for understanding a cut. Each shot contains a complete and unique thought. An editor will often allow a shot to play out then once it's served its purpose, they will cut. Its purpose may have been to deliver information that answers a question, or it may have been to raise a brand new question. This kind of cutting is exemplified when new characters are introduced in films. Take for example, the incredible opening scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, edited by Michael Kahn. The first shot establishes the location, but the main character's identity is shrouded in mystery prompting the audience to wonder several questions, like who is he, why is he here, and what will he find? A travel montage ensues while the opening credits play. Subsequent shots provide answers. He's an explorer, and they pose new questions like who's following him. Finally, once the credits have finished, the scene picks up pace. A map reveals that he's looking for something. One of the supporting characters pulls a gun. How will he react? With a whip. He steps into the light, revealing his identity. The scene ends with a satisfied audience. Questions have been answered, yet there are questions that remain unanswered, compelling the audience to continue watching. Michael Kahn has carefully controlled the flow of information in a manner that makes the entire scene engaging, creating questions that set up subsequent shots to provide answers. 
Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the writers of South Park, talk at length about the importance of causality in good storytelling. We found out this really simple rule that maybe you guys have all heard before, but it took us a long time to learn it. But we can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline, and if the words and then belong between those beats, you got, you got something pretty boring. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word therefore or but, right? So, so what I'm saying is that you come up with an idea and it's like, okay, this happens, right? And then this happens. No, 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 it should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. And there's so many scripts we read from new writers and, and, and things that we see. Yeah, yeah, you see movies that you're just watching, it's like, this happened, <laughs> this happened, and then this happened, and this happened. That's not a movie, you know, that's not a story. Like Trey said, it's those, those two, but, because, therefore, that gives you the causation between each beat, and that makes, that, that's a story. What is editing, if not simply visual storytelling? The same principles of causality apply to editing. Every shot is like a link in a chain. Each new shot hangs off the previous one and also sets up the next. In other words, when a great shot finishes, it feels like this. And the next shot feels like this. Now, let's be balanced. Can every shot be that amazing? No. A fair percentage of cuts will just be pragmatic. For example, combining takes to quicken the pace or to hide continuity issues. But audiences expect each element of a film whether that be score, dialogue, location, and of course the editing, to contribute meaningfully to the story. When cuts consistently happen without motivation, the audience goes to get snacks. Next time you're editing, remember that a good cut should feel motivated and necessary to the progression of the story and provide information that the audience cares about. Bad cuts are ones that are arbitrary, provide irrelevant information, or repeat information that previous shots have already shared. So what happens when you do it right? And what happens when you do it wrong? To answer that question, you'll have to wait till part three. Be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss it. We'll see you next time. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics, like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.